how to trigger another job in Jenkins using Pipeline. In a different video, I talked about how to configure upstream and downstream jobs in Jenkins. In that video, I primarily focused on upstream and talked a little bit about downstream. Instead of always watching upstream jobs, sometimes you just want to trigger a downstream job. Let's look at how we can do that using the build step. Here's today's starting point. We have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.1. Attached to this controller, I have a couple of agents and I also have a couple of predefined jobs. The first job is just a simple hello world job that we're gonna say hello from job one. Job two is similar, except it just says hello from job two. Now taking a look at job one, you can see that we're just echoing things out and we're not sending out a call to execute job two from job one yet. So before we generate the step, let's go take a look at the documentation for build step. What build allows us to do is to trigger a new build for a given job. We'll supply the job name. It could be a pipeline job or it could be freestyle or it could be anything else. It's just a name. Now, one of the things about jobs is if it's in the same folder, you can just reference it by name. If it's in different folders, you can either do relative or you can do absolute. If that downstream job requires parameters, then you can also pass the parameters. If we go beyond that, we can see that we can propagate. Now, what propagate means, and it's enabled by default, is based on the result of the downstream job. So if it was successful, then that would propagate back up to the job that I'm calling from, in my case, job one. If it was successful, I would continue on running the rest of my job. If that downstream job failed, then that would also cause my job one to fail. Now, along with the propagate, there's also a wait step. And by default, it is set to true. What wait does is it's going to wait until the build step completes, whether successful, failure, doesn't matter, but it's gonna wait until that completes before moving on. So let's go back over to our job one, and let's just go ahead and run it once so we can see what it looks like. So in job one, we see that it was started by user admin, that's who I'm logged in as. It ran on agent two, we see hello from job one, and then it finished successfully. Again, nothing about job two yet. Let's go ahead and go back into job one, and let's click on pipeline syntax. And under pipeline syntax, what we want to do is we want to change this to build. And remember, we want to build job two. Or another way to look at it is that we want to trigger job two. So I'm going to type in job two here. Notice that it finds the jobs that are on this controller. So I'll select job two. I'm gonna leave wait for completion checked. I'm also going to leave propagate checked. And the syntax helper here knows that job two is not parameterized, so I don't have to pass in any extra parameters. So let's go ahead and click on generate pipeline script. We're gonna copy this and let's go back over into job one and click on configure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a new stage. So I'm going to say stage trigger job two steps. And I'm gonna put in build job two. Now let's go ahead and add one more stage. I'm gonna say after job two steps. And I'm gonna say echo back after job two completion. So let's go ahead and click on save and click on build now. Now if we take a look at the output of job two, one, we can see that we're running on agent two, hello from job one, we're scheduling the project job two, then it's starting the build, and then it came back after job two completion. Let's click into job two right from the console log. So we get dropped into job two, and if we take a look at the output of job two, we can see that this was started by the upstream project job one, build number two, which was originally caused by, started by user admin. We ran the job, it ran on agent one, we got a hello from job two, it completed, and then that's when we went back to job one and completed the job. So let's go ahead and go back into job two, and I want to cause a failure in job two. So job two, configure, and instead of saying echo, we'll use pipeline syntax again. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to say error, and the message is going to be fail. We'll generate the pipeline script, we'll copy this, let's go back into job two, and we'll change our echo in job two to now error out. What we expect from this when we run job one is that job one will start successfully, it will fire off job two, job two will fail, and then we will fail job one and we will never run that third stage. So let's go back to dashboard, job one, build now. If we take a look at the output of three, we see our hello from job one that's starting. We're scheduling job two. Let's go ahead and click into job two. We can see that job two failed. If we take a look at the output, again, started by upstream project, Job one, build number three, we get an error fail. 
Let's go back over to our job one. And we can see that we're skipping the stage after job two due to the earlier failure, the failure that we had in job two. So job number two completed with status failure, and we propagated that error back up. So if we take a look at the dashboard here for job one, we can see that we failed trigger job two, and then it skipped over the after job two stage because trigger job two failed. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.